Hi, boys and girls. This week we are going to start our new unit on poems or poetry. Um, this year we have done a lot of fiction writing and nonfiction writing, and we just completed the unit on letters. So we are going to start our unit, our new unit on poems. The person who writes a poem is called a poet. I wrote the word right on this page so you can see it. The person who writes a poem is called a poet. Um, there are two poems on this page. That's why there's a word poems up here by the same poet. His name is Shel Silverstein. And I'm going to read these two poems to you. And I want you to think about what is a poem and what makes a poem different from a story, okay? As I read. So my first poem is Treehouse by Shel Silverstein, who is the poet. A treehouse, a free house, a secret you and me house, a high up in the leafy branches, cozy as can be house, a street house, a neat house, be sure and wipe your feet, house. Is not my kind of house at all. Let's go live in a tree house. What do you think the author means by a tree house? As you guys know, a tree house is a playhouse built high up in the tree or built in the tree. What does he mean by a street house? Now it says that street house and neat house, be sure and wipe your feet house. Hmm, that sounds like my mom or my grandma's house. <laughs> and so he is comparing a regular house with a tree house, a tree house. Look at some of the descriptive words he uses. A free house, a secret you and me house, cozy as can be house. I love his descriptive words. So authors use descriptive words. I'm um, sorry, poets. You see how we can get it all mixed up sometimes? Poets use descriptive words in their poetry or in their poems. Okay? So I'm getting ready to read another poem by the same poet. This one is called Bow Constrictor, and it's written by the same poet, like I said. Now, a bow constrictor is a large snake that wraps itself around its prey or animal that it's going to eat. Yeah. And um, like I said, it's called bow constrictor by the same poet. Oh, I'm being eaten by a bow constrictor. A bow constrictor. A bow constrictor. I'm being eaten by a bow constrictor. And I don't like it one bit. Well... What do you know? It's nibbling my toe. Oh, gee, it's up to my knee. Oh, my, it's up to my thigh. Oh, fiddle, it's up to my middle. Oh, heck, it's up to my neck. Oh, dread, it's up. <sighs> do you think that this poem is funny? There are some parts that are funny. Hmm. So sometimes... Um, poets use humor or something to make you laugh or smile. Um, they can also use repetition like a bow constrictor, a bow constrictor, a bow. They can do that or they can do rhyme. They can rhyme. There are some poems that rhyme and some, some poems that don't rhyme. For example, oh gee, it's up to my knee. Or, oh fiddle, it's up to my middle. G and knee rhymes. And fiddle and middle rhyme. So poets do that. There are some poems that rhyme and there are some poems that don't rhyme. But I want you to think about how do poems, how are poems different from stories? Hmm. Well, for one thing, they don't, they don't, the, right, the lines don't go all across the page. They write shorter lines, most poets do, and stories are usually longer than poem, poems. 
and some poems are shorter than some. This one is a little longer than that. Okay, so today I want you to write a poem. You can choose uh, something like a favorite, the secret place that you like, as in, as in the case of the treehouse uh, that this poet wrote about. Don't choose a po don't choose a treehouse, <laughs> or don't cho choose a bow constrictor, of course. But think about a place that is your secret place, or or think about an animal that you uh, can write about. Okay, and I have placed in seesaw and something for you to practice using your five senses. You can use that to practice, or you can just go ahead and write your poem and take a picture and send it to me. You can write it on a sheet of paper or you can use the note paper in Seesaw. Okay, I can't wait to read your poems.